journey with me, if you would, to the book of Matthew, a very familiar passage, amen, that the Lord has had me dealing with all week long. He planted me here, so I have to be obedient in preaching. Matthew chapter 7, and I'll be reading from the New King James, Matthew chapter 7, book of St. Matthew chapter 7. And the word of God reads, Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and do not consider the plank or log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck or splinter from your eye. And look, a plank is in or a log in your own eye. Hypocrite. Turn to your neighbor and say, hypocrite. I don't want y'all to miss that word. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. That's God's holy word. This is the word of God. Amen. Going to talk to you from this subject. Who made you my judge? All right. All right. Turn to your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor's going to preach about. Yeah. Who made you? Who made you? My judge. My judge. All right, man. All right. Let's just be praying. Y'all say amen. I'm going to preach it. Amen. If you don't say man, I'm still going to All right. All right. Who made you my judge? <coughs> Question. Is it ever right to pass judgment on the actions of others? Be careful how you answer that question. You might think that Jesus would have said no. Never right to judge. Instead, Jesus said it depends. There are times when you can judge and times when you can not judge. All right. The five verses that we have read today have something very important to say about this matter of judging one another. Whether we admit it or not, we all engage in judging from time to time. These verses do not mean that a child of God is forbidden to judge others, but it does mean that we are not to judge the inward motives of others in the sense of condemning them. God doesn't forbid our judging wrong and evil actions as we'll see in these passages today. Some people have even, even made it their lifestyle to judge others by their, their standards. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what Jesus has to say uh, about this vital matter of, of judging. Uh, and I'm gonna preach from this subject, who made you my judge? <coughs> Verses one and two tells, deals with the command and the reason. Verse 1 and 2 right here deals with the command and the reason. Uh, the word judge means to pronounce judgment, to, to, uh, to, uh, to expression, to express a, a, a form of disapproval uh -huh. or harsh criticism. It refers to act the part of judge or to pass judgment on the, on the, on the words and the deeds of another. Verse 1 says, verse 1, this right here says, judge not. Now, there are some occasions mentioned in the Bible where Christians are called on to exercise judgment. I'm going to help you along here over others. <laughs> and you don't have to go there now, but 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 6 tells us believers are commanded to judge uh, religions mm -hmm. and statements yeah. of teachers and preachers to see if they line up with the word of God and the teaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to judge that. 
Well, the Bible tells us in no particular te uh, text, test the uh, spirit by the spirit right. to see whether they are of God. Yes. Yes. Right. Proper judgment. Yes. Right. Matthew chapter 7, same, same, same chapter, verses 15 to 20 tells us we are obligated to examine, here you go, Reverend Hegwood, the fruit of those around us. Right. Right. And base our fellowship with that person uh, uh, based on what we we uh, we see in their life. Right, right. Amen. Based the fellowship of the person, the base of our fellowship, based on that, whether that person that if, if, if that lifestyle lines up with their belief. All right. So what? What is Jesus talking about? This word judge means to criticize, condemn, to judge, to censor. Listen, it's an, it's an old fault-finding attitude. It's, a, it's being picky. Bradley, it has the habit of a criticism. It's a, he said it, it's, it's a mean, critical spirit that sees only a bad nose. It's a mean critical spirit that sees only the bad in others. Jesus is talking about looking at people and attempting to judge their motives and their real spiritual condition based on what we see in their life. The idea here is that the judge presumes to know the condition of another person's heart. And you don't know what's going on inside that person. Amen. His or herself. He, 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 he sets himself or herself up to judge and, and jury and, and proclaim the guilt and innocence of all those around him. This is the attitude that Jesus condemns. If you come to Bible study, we're talking about that. The, the seven things the Lord hates. Amen. A proud look. This week we're talking about the lying tongue. Amen. God condemns some things we do. Y'all can say Amen. amen. I don't care how long you've been saved, amen. I don't care how many times you've been baptized. Right. I don't care how many how many uh, uh, songs you led, amen, and, and in the choir, on the deacon board or whatever. I don't know how many scriptures that you, uh, I don't even know how many scriptures that you know. Condemnation comes from God only. Amen. Amen. When you judge the person's heart. That's right. Now, verse 2 tells us the person who sets himself up as the judge of others with himself face judgment someday. Uh, oh, it's right there in the text. I'm going to help you with that. The critic who, who forgets that he or she would also face judgment from the law. Romans 14, around verse 10 through 12. See, in that day, God will use the, the same yardstick to judge the critic that he used to judge others. It's not going to be a different yardstick. It's going to be the same yardstick. Yardstick. Consider these verses the next time you think about sitting in judgment of another person. In other words, when you when you judge another person, you will eventually reap what you sow. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Galatians six and seven. By the way, for every person you 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 watch and criticize, here we go. There is someone else watching and criticizing you. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. It's going to get tight in a minute. Here's the bottom line. We have no right to judge and criticize the lives of those around us. Right. There's some reasons why I say this this morning. Don't criticize because you don't know all the facts. Secondly, don't criticize because we all fail God and sin. We all fall short. There are none righteous. No, not one. If you, you miss the mark. Let me really come down your road. I don't care how much you clean up your house. You've heard this before. You can dust every day. You can wash every dish. Amen. It's still some dust in your house. All right. All right. Don't criticize uh, because you don't know the content of the other person's heart. Mm -hmm. 
and don't criticize uh, when you do, uh, you, you are tempted to assume the authority of God. Right. And there is only one true God. Read your Bible. Yes. One God, one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Right. Who are you to judge? James chapter 4, verse right. 11 through 12. All right. All right. Don't criticize me because you will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ yourself. Yeah. All right. Right. Romans 14, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess yeah. that Jesus Christ is Lord. You're going to have to stand before Jesus, and you can't stand on mama's coat jail, or the preacher, amen. Uh -oh. Queen of Soul is gone, she's on her own, well, on her own. John McCain's gone, he's on his own. You yes, can't even no politician, no singer, you don't care how many records you've made, how, yeah. how, how, how high you are in the political realm. You're going to have to stand, you said today, for Jesus for yourself. I don't care how many sermons you can preach, how many yeah. folks you can say happen. How many songs and five members you the led? You're going to have to stand before Jesus yourself. I'm feeling this thing now. Yes. 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 You walk around here judging folks the way the outside looking out, everything. Yeah. yeah, I don't like when the boys got their pants down, but they might know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I don't know what's in them. We got folks walking around in three piece suits. Uh, <laughs> right. Fancy out of shape cases. Yeah. Alligators, Stacey Adams, and Rockport yeah. shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Got so much hell in them. Yeah. Stealing money. Yeah. Robbing folk. Yeah. Don't know the Lord. Yeah. You can't trust them. Yeah. But they looking real good. Yeah. Driving Lexuses and Mercedes and BMWs. Yeah. And the biggest crook in the world. Yeah. You think they are right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the challenge is to be heard. Uh -huh. Verse three and four tells us, uh, "How can you say to your brother?" I love this. Let me remove the speck from your eye. Uh -huh. I I'm paraphrasing, and I got something going on with me. Now, here Jesus speaks to the real issue. Mm -hmm. When we judge another, we always do so from a warped perspective. <laughs> All right. Preach past the mouth. Yes, sir. He uses the human image of a man who has a log sticking out of his eye. All right. All right. Trying to to help remove a little splinter from another person's eye. Yeah. Well, well. Now, some Bibles say the moat. It's turns to the moat. Oh. 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 Now, the word moat refers to a twig, a dry twig, or, or a piece of chaff. Uh -huh. We might call it a splinter. Uh -huh. Now, the word beam refers to a low-bearing beam in a house. Uh -huh. <coughs> Literally, it refers to a log, yeah. which is large, uh -huh. heavy, yeah. and noticeable. <laughs> Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. All right. All right. Imagine how impossible that would be. Now, the problem is, Reverend Higwood, with judging others, and that is that we are often guilty of the same or worse sins ourselves. Yes. Yes. There it is right there. Yes. None of us or anything to brag about. All of us got a past. Yeah. Yeah. And some of us, and many of us don't want to want that person that's sitting next to us today, yeah. preach Reverend Miles, <laughs> to know our past. Yeah. We put on a a a a a, a glimpse or a picture that we've been like this all the time. <laughs> While we look at the way some people dress, I'm coming down your road, at, at the outward signs of their sin in their lives, we are often blind to the prejudices and the hypocritical spirit 
and other sins that lurk within our own heart. Let me really come down your road. Some of y'all got some biased attitudes right now in your heart about folks. And some prejudices as the same. Some of y'all cannot, I'm preach, I can preach, can I, can I preach? Some of us got some feelings about some folk in church right now. If they don't say nothing to me, I ain't gonna say nothing to me. What makes me think that I am in any position to straighten you out when I'm a mess myself? See, we judge folk, can I cut? We judge folk because they drink Hennessy, but we drink Crown Raw. We judge folk because they smoke cigarettes. But we put caffeine, six or seven cups of coffee in our body every day. Yeah. Okay. And you, because you know what, you go to the doctor, he's gonna say, "Ain't none of that any good for you." Right. I don't care how legal it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. I hear from God, oh, you gotta put them cigarettes down, and you have about five, six, seven cups of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> caffeine done. Right. But you know what? <laughs> Y'all gotta stay wired up. The <laughs> main caffeine is about 10 cans of Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> and you look, I, 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 I mean, just look on how much sugar sugar in a can of Pepsi. Oh. Preach, Reverend Marlin. Yeah. And it tells you, Pepsi tells you it's made with, y'all with me? It's made with real sugar. Yeah. Yeah. You can judge that person, tell them they don't need to eat that pork job. <laughs> Pastor Nana, do you need to be eating that? Oh. Amen. Now here's the hard part. Here's the hard part. Here's the truth that is so hard to swallow. Jesus is saying that the sin of the critic is greater than the sin of the person being judged. Listen. Have you ever noticed what church folk have a tendency to do? When they think you are confused or they don't agree with you, they either attack you or alienate you. Preach past them out. I'm so glad Jesus is not like that. Because the Bible tells us the way of the fool is right in his own eye. Look at verse 5. I'm almost done. It says, hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye. And then you can see clearly, y'all are, are you, you are on the underline clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I'm going to get out your way because I, I, it's tight, but it's right. Amen. God had told me to preach this. Yes, sir. You have to have the right balance yes, in your life. That's right. Jesus here gives a corrective to the, to the wrong kind of judgment. Yeah, yeah. By showing the right balance of humility and conviction. He calls those people who judge and criticize others hypocrites. They're all around us. He says that when we do this, we're merely acting like we are, here we go, holier than we really are. The text tells us, first take the law out of your own eye, then you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Where you going, Brother Mylon? Hang on. First of all, we confess our own sin, often the sin of self-righteousness and of condemning spirit toward others, and we ask God for the cleansing. Here it is. When our own sin is cleansed, when the law is taken out of our own eye, then we can see our own brother's sin clearly and able to help them. Amen. Stay stay with me. I'm not done. Then we will allow everything to be seen clearly. What you're saying, preacher. We we can see God better. We can see others better. And we can see ourselves better. That's our problem with a lot of us. We can't see ourselves too good. 
We will see God as the only judge, others as needy sinners who are just like you. All right. All right. All right. We will see our brother as a brother. Y'all with me today? Yeah. We will see our sister as our sister at our own level and our own frailty and our own needs. We all need help, you all. Yeah. 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 Something wrong with all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a story as I get out your way about an owner of a manufacturing plant mm -hmm. who decided to make a surprise tour of the shop that he owned. Mm -hmm. Brantley, while he was walking through the, the warehouse, he noted a young man lazily, lazily leaning on a box of crates, All boxes, right. yeah. with his hands in his pocket doing uh -huh. nothing. Uh -huh. The boss, boss walked up to him, angry and upset. He said, just, 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 just how much are you paid a week, son? Uh -huh. Well, the young man's eyes got that pretty much big, rather big, and he said I get about 500 bucks a week. Uh -huh. So the boss pulled out his wallet and he peeled out five $100 bills. Gave it to him, brother Black, and said, here's a week pay, week's pay, now get yourself out of here, and don't you ever come back. Ooh. 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 Well, without saying a word, what the young man did, he stuffed the money in his pocket, and he, he took off. Yeah. Now the warehouse manager was standing nearby in the corner. He was perplexed and he was astonished. Sister Steve, he was amazed. So the boss walked over to him and said, now, now, now tell me, how long has that guy been working for us? The manager said, he doesn't work here. He was just delivering some packages. That says it all. We judge it for what we see and how we see folks. You cannot judge a, a, a tree by its leaves, but you judge a tree by the fruit. Let me get out of here. Y'all want to help me tonight? You cannot judge a book by its cover, but you judge a book by its content. You don't judge a car by, by, by the stereo system, amen, of the, the rims, amen, of, of the sunroof. But you judge it as you drive it up and down the street about 500 miles, amen, yeah. in this city street. So much, we, so much good in us, you all, and, and so much bad in the best of us, it hardly behooves any of us to talk about the rest of us. We all are judgmental, and we're judgmental the wrong way. I'm done here, may the Lord bless you real good. Here's the invitation. Have you been guilty of passing judgment on other people because they do not live like you do? All right. Has the Lord spoken to your heart about this matter? Yeah, if he has, then you, you need to come, come forward today, right, and get the law out of your own eyes. Yeah. Have you been unjustly judged by others? Have you forgiven the ones who did that to you? And you, you need to because Jesus took all our judgment on the cross. Right. Oh, yes, he did. I'm done here. May the Lord bless you real good. Because Romans 5 and 8 tells us God demonstrated his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, y'all know the story. He died for us. So when you were doing what you're doing and you're still doing maybe what you're doing, amen, Jesus died for your sin and my sin. That's why on the cross he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said the thief on the cross, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, verily, verily, you can come with me in paradise. So who are we to judge our brother or our sister? Because they got something on that we even can't wear. And then we lie to them and we say we like it. 
And then we really don't like it. And then we get out of here. And you say they shouldn't have that on. But you lied because the Bible says you tell them that you really look good. But you really doesn't need it. And then we get on our car. And we go on home. And we judge and folk when we get to work. Because they don't look like us. The texture of their hair is not like us. They don't look on the same side of the tracks that we live. They don't drive what we drive. You drive Fords. They drive GMs. You drive, amen, amen, Toyotas. They drive Hunters. Amen. They drive Chevy trucks. But you drive 150s. They got light kids. You got dark kids. But everybody gonna ever, ever please shall buy. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Shall we stand?